We've seen spectroscopy across the whole range from terahertz, IR, Raman, visible, UV, extreme UV, soft and hard X-rays, some of these generated by tabletop lasers and others with three kilometer long free electron lasers and even specialized institutions uh, creating the most intense light sources. We've heard about studies of just single atoms through small organic molecules, large organometallics, proteins, liquids, ionic liquids, liquid crystals, and macromolecular crystals. With metals, insulators, perovskites, metallic carbides and nitrides, and in one case, maybe, but we're not quite sure, maybe a superconductor. Uh, molecules have been studied on their own in the gas phase, in clusters, in microcrystals, in hydrogen bonded complexes, in solution, in liquid jets, on oxide or graphite surfaces, and even in a living animal. Uh, they've been ionized, sometimes twice ionized, poor things. They've dissociated, they've been bound and released from pockets in proteins. They've had protons transferred, undergone spin transitions, been used to harvest light. They've had their singlets ripped apart into two triplets. They've had their rings opened. They've had their chirality changed. Crystals have undergone phase changes, had ions forced to go around, dance around in circles, they've had their spins flipped over. Not just that, we've studied, not just these real molecules, we've studied quasi-particles like uh, solvated electrons, phonons, magnons, excitons, and our favorite, of course, photons. We've not just studied the amplitude of photons, but we've studied the phase of the photons. We've covered a huge range of temperatures. I think the, 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 um, the, the prize for the lowest temperature goes to 2.8 Kelvin. Uh, lots of experiments were studied at exactly 19 degrees Kel uh, Celsius, which turns out to be the temperature of uh, Germany. Um, and, uh, this goes all the way up to the hottest processes, some which are so hot that they don't even classify as thermal anymore. We call them athermal processes. You can't even define a temperature for these things. Uh, we've had theoretical developments from uh, phenomenological models fit to experiment all the way to first principles electronic structure calculations. We've had exact solutions of the Schrodinger equation, we've used path integrals, we've had surface hopping, we've gone beyond surface hopping in a number of ways, we've uh, had classical molecular dynamics, and we've had machine learning approaches. We've heard about some of the cutting edge latest developments, some which are so preliminary results they were only collected last week and analyzed on the train over here, but we've also gone all the way back in time to the history of the development of the laser, and even in one case, medicines used in ancient Egypt. So overall, I think you agree with me, this week has been a fantastic way to celebrate the end of 12 exciting years of MUST. But thank you for coming and making this conference such a success. Many of us have only had to come from Switzerland, but this year this conference has been truly international. We've had scientists uh, also from Germany, Hungary, Poland, Czechia, Sweden, Italy, UK, USA, and at least via Zoom from China. We've heard from many uh, very young scientists including some who, uh, maybe you should say, are uh, young at heart, at least. Um, so I'd like then finally to thank the organizers uh, of this conference, in particular, uh, Jan and Karina, who uh, have done so much to ensure the smooth running of this meeting, as well as, of course, all the other must activities over the years. I'd like to thank the technical support of the course students who are um, forced into doing these things, and, and uh, from the back as well, for keeping the slides and the microphones rolling seamlessly from one speaker to the next. And this is your coffee break. But most of all, of course, we thank Ursula and Thomas uh, for creating this amazing network and all the opportunities that it's brought for us all over the last 12 years. They've dedicated themselves to the success of MUST, um, and we are deeply grateful to them for their hard work, generous and supportive spirit, and strong leadership. <coughs> On a personal note, <laughs> On a personal note I'll add that I, I joined MUST about five years ago, almost immediately after arriving for the first time in Switzerland. And it was a great help in instantly getting to know all my, uh, all, all people from every single university all over Switzerland, hearing lots of interesting ideas which have inspired many of the projects uh, that I was setting up in my new group. Uh, it will be a real shame that we won't continue to meet together in Grindelwald every year, and I already miss what used to be our annual thrill of ultra-fast sledging uh, in the winter. But I'm sure we will continue to be meeting nonetheless, even if it's not here. 
So Natalie opened this conference saying um, it felt a bit like the beginning of the end. But actually, this is just the end of the beginning. Because everything we've done in our network is going to continue, not just the excellent science, but also the public outreach, promoting the advancement of young scientists, and actively working to close the gender gap in our universities. So the future uh, is going to be called the Swiss Society for Photon Science. And you can see the website, which are uh, here, uh, um, swissphotonscience.ch, um, for news, events, and job announcements. Even though it was pouring with rain on, on, on Wednesday, all the experimentalists rushed, out, rushed outside as they just couldn't resist observing just one more photon scattering event of this beautiful rainbow. <laughs> and in fact, no wonder, because it was a really beautiful double rainbow. So I'd like to leave you to wonder at the beauty and the complexity of nature's own photon science that we see here. It inspires us all to better understand the fundamental working of the world at a molecular level. And we need to share and use this knowledge wisely, either directly or indirectly, for the protection of nature and the environment and for the benefit of society worldwide. Thank you very much.